The story of Roy Albert DeMeo begins right here in this section of Brooklyn known as the Flatlands. He was the fourth of five children born on September 7, 1940 to first-generation Italian parents, Anthony and Eleanor DeMeo. Roy DeMeo's grandfather, Candeloro DeMeo, was born in Manarola, Italy and immigrated to the United States in 1901. He worked as a laborer at the Brooklyn Navy Yard where some of the Navy's most prominent battleships were built. Roy's father, Anthony DeMeo, was born in Brooklyn in 1905. He was one of nine siblings and grew up in the Prospect Lefferts Gardens area, which was just a short distance away from Brooklyn's Prospect Park, as well as Ebbets Field, the home stadium for the Brooklyn Dodgers. Roy's mother, Eleonora Colarulo, known as Eleanor, was born in Brooklyn in 1910. She was one of six siblings and was raised in the neighborhood of Brooklyn, now known as Dumbo. Her father, Francesco, had immigrated to the United States from Italy in 1898 and worked as a laborer, doing road work on the streets of New York. Anthony and Eleanor married in February of 1929, and in December of that same year, their first child, Candeloro Luis de Mayo, was born. Roy grew up right here on Avenue P, a middle-class neighborhood with freestanding homes and tree-lined streets. And this house across the street right behind me is Roy's actual childhood home where he grew up. Roy DeMeo's father worked as a truck delivery man at the Cascade Laundry Plant in the Bed-Stuy neighborhood of Brooklyn. It was the largest linen and laundry service in New York City and they supplied linens and cleaning services to many different businesses throughout the tri-state area. Cascade would be a fixture in Brooklyn for over a hundred years. Roy's mother Eleanor was a housewife. Roy and his siblings attended a Catholic middle school named St. Thomas Aquinas, which was just a few blocks away from his home. Growing up, Roy was an overweight boy who was picked on by neighborhood bullies. Although when his older brother Tony, nicknamed Chubby, was around, he would defend his younger brother and bullies wouldn't dare. Tony DeMeo had joined the Marines and was overseas fighting in the Korean War. He was killed in battle in 1951. While in Korea, he had wiped out an enemy machine gun nest and was awarded the silver medal which was presented to his parents at his funeral. His death had greatly impacted the dynamic of the DeMeo family and the atmosphere in the home had become sullen. Roy had harbored anger at losing his older brother and protector and that anger had grew worse with adolescence. Roy had started to turn into the same kind of bully as the other kids who had previously taunted him. Roy DeMeo had some prominent members in his family such as his uncle Albert DeMeo who was the assistant Brooklyn DA and was the prosecutor on many mob cases. as well as his father's cousin, Dominic DeMeo, who was the chief medical examiner for New York City, although his branch of the DeMeo family spelled their last name differently. Just one house away from the DeMeo home lived a family which his father had warned him to stay away from. The Profacis. Here lived Salvatore Profaci, who was the brother of Joe Profaci, who was the boss of the Profaci family, which would later become the Colombo family. Salvatore was a captain in the Profaci family and had lived here with his wife and kids. One of Salvatore Profaci's sons was Salvatore Profaci Jr. Sal Jr. had previously been arrested and charged with bookmaking and was part of the faction of the Profaci family, which was at war with Joey Gallo and his family. 
Roy's interactions with the Perfacci boys may very well have been his first glimpse into the Mafia life. Young Roy was impressed by seeing all the wise guys arriving in their expensive cars to attend poker night at the Perfacci house. At age 15, Roy was an Eagle Scout and found a part-time job delivering orders and working as a butcher's apprentice for a local store named Banner Dairy, which was just a short distance away on Flatbush Avenue and once stood at this very location. Roy's boss said that he was one of the hardest workers he'd ever met. Roy had also began to slim down from riding his bike around town doing deliveries as well as lifting heavy boxes of laundry detergent in the basement of Banner Dairy. In the DeMeo home, the tension had increased and Roy was at odds with his father and often heard my neighbors having shouting matches with him. One day he was even seen having a fist fight with his father in the middle of the street. Roy had attended this very high school, James Madison High School in Sheepshead Bay, Brooklyn. Some notable people who attended James Madison include Chris Rock, Andrew Dice Clay, Judge Judy, and Bernie Sanders. Both Sanders and DeMeo graduated in 1959, but Sanders was part of Madison's June class, while DeMeo was part of January's. Roy was an honor student with credits for perfect attendance, and his teachers described him as well-behaved and cooperative. Yet outside of school, he built up a reputation as a vicious street fighter who would fight dirty and do whatever he needed to to get the advantage. While he was still in high school, DeMeo was using his income from Banner Dairy to run a small loan sharking operation in his neighborhood. As his loan sharking operation grew, so did his neighborhood reputation. The Flatlands faction of the Lucchese family had caught wind of DeMeo and soon he would become an associate of the family. His street savvy and reputation as a fearsome brawler made him an effective loan shark, ensuring that anyone he lent money to would pay up. At age 18, Roy was bringing in good money for someone his age between his job at Banner Dairy and his loan sharking operation. He was driving a Cadillac and loved to show off to his friends how much money he had. He had also left home and was now renting an apartment on his own. Roy had become an assistant manager at Banner Dairy, but this was just a temporary situation because he fully intended to make his living as a loan shark. In April of 1960, at the age of 19, Roy married a local girl named Gladys Britton at a ceremony in Palm Beach, Florida. A year later, their first daughter was born. In 1960, when Roy was 20 years old, his father was found in a subway dead from a heart attack while on his way to work. While Roy harbored no ill will towards his father, the only oppositional influence between him and a life of crime was now gone. Not long after his father's death, DeMeo's mother took his youngest brother and moved to Italy to stay with family by Naples. By the time Roy DeMeo was 22, he had moved on from Banner Dairy and had never worked another legitimate day in his life. Roy was a regular at neighborhood hangouts in the Flatlands and Canarsie areas. He would frequent places such as Benny's Candy Store on Canarsie Road and Avenue N. Back in the 50s and 60s, candy stores in New York City were soda shops where people would hang out and some proprietors also served as the neighborhood bookie. This was well before off-track betting was legalized. Other hangouts included Jimmy's Restaurant on Flatbush Avenue, Gil Hodges Lanes, which still stands here at the same location but has since been renamed, and Phil's Lounge, his favorite neighborhood bar which he would eventually purchase. Through these hangouts, Roy would meet various local small-time criminals. One of those early connections he made was with Freddie Denomi, who was a car thief working for the Lucchese family. Freddie was a dyslexic who was unable to read or write, but was a genius at car mechanics. Known as Broadway Freddie, he applied that mechanical genius of his to race cars as well as steal them. 
Broadway Freddy was a much more favorable nickname than the ones he had earned years earlier. When he was a kid, he was known as Crazy Freddy. Then he would come to be known as Mad Dog because he once settled a dispute with a pizza shop owner by decapitating the man's dog and tossing it into his crowded restaurant. Roy continued to grow his loan sharking operation and in 1966, he caught the attention of Anthony Nino Gaggi, who was a member of the Gambino family and had heard about DeMeo through the Lucchese's. Gaggi had been mob connected since his teens and was now a made man in the Gambino family. Coming up, Gaggi's mentor was his father's cousin, Frank Scalise, who was a big player in the mob and was close friends with Lucky Luciano. Scalise had served as underboss to Albert Anastasia, who was the boss of the Anastasia family, which would soon become the Gambino family after Anastasia's killing in 1957. Scalise had been selling memberships to people to join the Anastasia family, and when the boss Albert Anastasia discovered this, hitmen were sent to kill him. In 1957, Scalise was ambushed while buying fruit from a Bronx fruit stand. It is said that Scalise's murder inspired the scene from The Godfather, where hitmen attempted to assassinate Vito Corleone as he bought fruit. The mobster who allegedly murdered Scalise was a man named Vincent Squilanti who worked as an assassin for Anastasia. In 1960, Squilanti got caught up in an extortion case and was feared to cooperate, so the boss of the newly established Gambino family, Carlo Gambino, ordered him to be taken out. A hit squad was dispatched to eliminate Squilanti and he was never seen or heard from again and his body was never found. One of those Hit Squad members was none other than Nino Gaggi, who would get to exact revenge on the man who killed his mentor Scalise. Gaggi's killing of Squilanti would lead him to become a made man in the Gambino family. Gaggi was impressed by DeMeo's qualities, such as his business acumen and intelligence. In addition to this, Gaggi noticed that DeMeo had a dark side that could be mean and nasty when he needed to be. With personality traits seemingly tailor-made for the Mafia, Gaggi had invited DeMeo to work directly for the Gambinos, to which Roy gladly obliged. Roy's connection with Gaggi would prove to be a lucrative business partnership. Gaggi used Roy Savvy to increase his loan shark and customers and also introduced him to the pornography business, which was still illegal at the time. DeMeo had a knack for taking just about any opportunity and turn it into a lucrative business venture. Roy DeMeo was making all of the right underworld connections and was now fully entrenched in a life of crime. 